Good evening and welcome to another edition of Tiger's Roar. I'm Tommy Chrysan, joined by Ronnie Rance tonight. He's lost so much weight you can't even see him, huh? How about that? Hey, hand for Ronnie Rance. No, Ronnie will be joining us in just a couple of minutes. This is Wednesday night. That means it's time for two hours of Tiger's Roar. It's each and every Wednesday night, year-round, right here on Pelican Sports TV, Baton Rouge, Lafayette, New Orleans. Streams on the internet at pelicansportstv.com. Spread the roar, as we like to say. And let your friends and family know about it. And you can, again, stream it on the internet so you can be anywhere. Uh, a lot of people in the Florida panhandle uh, watching tonight. We appreciate that. PelicanSportsTV.com. This is a year round show. If you're catching this on a Thursday, Friday, or a Saturday, you got a replay going, but that's okay. We appreciate you tuning in. On Fridays, uh, it airs at 5 o'clock in New Orleans on WHNO TV, Channel 20. And of course, that includes the North Shore, covered in Mandeville, Slidell, Washington Parish, that whole bit. It hits Bayou Country with Thibodeau and Homa and, and Lafouche Parish, Terrebonne Parish, the Mississippi Gulf Coast, all on WHNO TV. Great partners of Pelican Broadcasting out down in New Orleans. Dean and Ken Berthlot, Ken Trahan, them guys do a great job and they pick up Tiger's Roar. Speaking of that, you know, it's, it's a little too late tonight, but each and every Wednesday at 7 p.m., we have Sports NOLA TV, a program that emanates on their station, WHNO, Sports NOLA. Uh, hosted by Ken Trahan, I got former New Orleans Saint wide receiver Torrance Small, uh, award-winning writer Brian Alley Walsh, and other guests. It's on Pelican Sports TV every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. It's a one-hour show, leads you right into Tigers Raw. So I know it's too late for tonight, but next Wednesday you want to get a little look at Sports Nola. Certainly they're going to have plenty of Saints stuff, uh, Hornets prep stuff from the New Orleans area, as well as the statewide information. Sports Nola TV right here on Pelican Sports TV, Wednesdays at 7 p.m., leading you into the live broadcast of Tigers Roar. Yes, foot, LSU football season's over, but not Tigers Roar. We go 52 weeks a year with this program. Obviously, there's always some football that can be talked about, basketball. And how ironic is this? Trent Johnson's basketball team, as we speak, playing in Tuscaloosa against Alabama. Hey, it was on the schedule a long time ago. Keep in mind, too, about basketball. No Eastern and Western divisions in the men's uh, SEC conference now, so you got all 12 laid out in a row for basketball. They got away from the divisional thing. But on tonight's show, certainly we're going to have a lot of LSU football. The thud, as I put it, the thud in the dome Monday night. LSU gets outcoached, outplayed, outmanned, outexecuted, you name it. It happened to LSU. 21 nothing. not indicative of how much of a whipping it truly was by Alabama. Give Alabama credit. Give Alabama a lot of credit. They got the job done. They came in there. They wanted it more than LSU did. That was obvious. That was evident. LSU, on the other hand, I mean, they, they picked a bad night to have a bad night. Jordan Jefferson had a horrible night. The offensive line had a horrible night. The coaching staff had a horrible night. I mean, defense played good, not great, but good. Had the defense not played good, it might have been 50 to nothing down there in the Superdome. Special teams, eh, little of this, little of that, nothing to write home about. But LSU goes down to Alabama for the BCS championship. Alabama ends up number one in all polls. LSU, number two in all the polls. So here on tonight's uh, edition of Tigers Roar, we're going to have uh, a bunch of stuff. We had Chris and Carter from the Pelican Sports TV staff in New Orleans, and they've got plenty of footage and highlights for you. We're going to get a stat comparison. We're going to have comments from after the game by Coach Miles, Coach Chavis, some of the LSU players. We'll see Coach Saban's comments, and I know many of you have seen all this before. Some of you might not want to relive it, but some of you may want to listen again, try to catch something, read between the lines. A couple of uh, news items out of the LSU football program today on Wednesday afternoon. One coach has left the staff. Uh, wide receiver and passing game coordinator Billy Gonzalez, who was in, in his second, completed his second year at LSU, has left the program. He has been named offensive coordinator at Illinois up in the Big Ten. So Billy Gonzalez is gone from the program. And then Brian Lazar of TigerBait.com, and yes, Brian will be with us uh, in hour number two tonight. He reported at TigerBait.com that Russell Shepard has decided to declare himself eligible for the NFL draft. I'm a little mystified by that, but as a friend pointed out to me, the NFL just wants athletes. My friend thought Russell Shepard, a very good athlete, was just misused by Les Miles for three years. By the way, the stats on Russell Shepard for this season, seven carries, 
seven carries for 52 yards. That's all Russell Shepard did running the football this year. Pass receiving, he did have 14 catches for 190 yards. That's a season total, 14 catches for 190 yards. Shepard did catch four touchdown passes, which was second on the team to Reuben Randall's eight touchdown receptions. So Russell Shepard has told TigerBait.com's Ryan Lazar that he will make himself eligible for the NFL draft. Don't know where he'll be drafted. That remains to be seen. So Billy Gonzalez is out as receivers coach and passing game coordinator. He's the offensive coordinator at Illinois. Les Miles was quoting, uh, I'm paraphrasing here, he was quoted as wishing Billy Gonzalez and his family well. Uh, excited for him to get a, a, an excellent opportunity. Said he's going to take his time to fill that coaching position. He's not going to be in a hurry, but he said he would bring in a, a, an outstanding coach with, with a great uh, resume uh, to take the place of Billy Gonzalez on the staff. So we're going to have a lot of stuff from the Dome, from the BCS title game. We'll talk a little BCS. They're talking about a, a semifinal and a final kind of playoff thing at some meetings held in New Orleans Tuesday morning, uh, the morning following the uh, title game. Also tonight, uh, kind of a bizarre situation for Landon Collins, and we bring it up again tonight because obviously he was choosing between LSU and Alabama, made his verbal commitment to Alabama. His mother didn't like it. We got all that footage for you. Got some highlights of Landon Collins. Strange going on uh, down in Dutchtown. Now, nothing becomes official till February 1, National Signing Day, Wednesday, February 1. And I've been told that LSU is still trying to convince Landon Collins to change his mind. Don't know whether they can do that or that will happen, but we got that stuff for you tonight on, on the program uh, with Dutchtown's Landon Collins. I, I got to see Landon Collins play about nine or ten times in the last couple of years, uh, so I, I'm very familiar with his talent and his talent level. As I mentioned, we will have Brian Lazar. Of, uh, there you get a look at Collins right there, some, some footage uh, from the Pelican Broadcasting crew. Uh, we will have Brian Lazar of TigerBait.com on the program. He'll have that story about Russell Shepard, about Billy Gonzalez leaving the staff, and uh, among other things from Brian Lazar of TigerBait.com. Also, we will have our weekly run through the LSU Athletic Department. Got some basketball to talk about. Hey, the Lady Tigers are on a nine-game winning streak, 3-0 and in conference play. Uh, they'll be uh, in action again tomorrow night against uh, South Carolina in the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. That'll be a Thursday night game. Those of you catching the replay here, I should say Thursday night, not tomorrow night. And, of course, the men's team, as I mentioned, we're live Wednesday. They're playing Alabama as we speak in Tuscaloosa. I hope they got some earplugs going on. And uh, the men will have another road game at Arkansas this Saturday, back home next Tuesday night against Auburn in the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. I went to the LSU basketball game last Saturday, the SEC opener when they uh, throttled Ole Miss, 81-55. Justin Hamilton looked very good. Storm Warren looked very good. I was impressed. That was the first time I saw the team play in person this year. They're a better basketball team, so when they get back in town on Tuesday the 17th to play Auburn, get on out to the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. They only won three games in conference play last year. I certainly expect them to pass that number uh, this coming season. We're also going to have some baseball stuff for you. We got the preseason polls. We can take a look at where those teams finished last year. When Ronnie Ranch joins us in a few minutes, he's got some information. Baseball team going to start practicing next week. They will have their season opener at home at Alec Box Stadium on Friday, February 17th, and they'll play the Air Force Academy. Yes, Paul Manera used to coach at Air Force. He was there before he was at Notre Dame, before he came to LSU. So that'll certainly be a story there. So we'll have that, and of course, we'll find out about the Lady Tigers softball team and the other spring sports as we go forward this spring. Again, Tigers Roar, a year-round program, Wednesday nights live from 8 to 10 p.m., uh, two hours, spread the roar, streams on the internet at pelicansportstv.com, Baton Rouge, Lafayette, New Orleans, replayed Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and many markets, and we appreciate that. I uh, do want to thank uh, Troy LaBeouf for pinch hitting last week here on Tigers Roar. He's the sports director at KKAY, 1590 AM. And as we announced to you last Wednesday, and we began on the air this Monday, Monday the 9th, the day of the uh, BCS title game, Pelican Sports Radio has landed. It's time to come flying with us again. We've got the same time slot, 3 until 4 p.m., but now we are on KKAY, 1590 AM, on your radio dial. That program does stream on the Internet at KKAY1590.com, as well as GlobalRadioKKAY.com. Either website will get you the stream, and, of course, that's good anywhere in the world. If you have the smartphone thing going on, like I have on my BlackBerry, or the people with the iPhones, the Windows, Androids, there's a free app in the App Store 
called TuneIn, T-U-N-E-I-N, TuneIn. It's a free app, takes you 20, 30 seconds to download it. You've got it. Search local stations, circles, search sports. You can find KKAY 1590 on the TuneIn app on your smartphones. And I've talked to many people this week who put that on their smartphones. They went to the laptop right before we went on the air today from the Caddyshack driving range. A friend of mine texted me, had his laptop ready to go, wanted to listen to the program. Got him a website address, globalradiokkay.com. He had to clear as a bell. He was able to listen to Pelican Sports Radio. So as we asked you last Wednesday, we need you to spread the word to your sports friends, fans, friends, family about Pelican Sports Radio on also on KKAY, we're not standing alone. We're not the only sports show. Jordy Holtberg, who is, is a longtime sportscaster in this town, his radio show is on KKAY 1590 AM from 7 in the morning until 9. 7 to 9, Jordy Holtberg with the Jordy Holtberg Show. From 9 until 11, same station, KKAY 1590 AM. Chad Bluen, he of Sports Shorts TV, Sports Shorts Radio. Uh, he's on those programs. He has his own radio show, 1590 AM. KKAY. And that 1 o'clock, Buddy Sanji, the guy who's got the longest continuous tenure on the radio in the Baton Rouge market, he's keeping it spicy for you from 1 until 3 p.m. Buddy Sanji, 1 until 3 p.m. on KKAY, 1590 a.m. on your radio dial, taking your phone calls. Buddy's buddy, you know, and uh, appreciate having him as a lead-in to Pelican Sports Radio from 3 until 4 p.m. Again, it's a great sports lineup. We're the anchor leg of the four-man relay team, and that's great. We enjoy it. We like that time slot and appreciate everybody who has been helping to spread the word about that program and where it has landed, as well as all the programs at KKAY. And we thank, again, Sports Director Troy LaBeouf, Bridget and Harry Hoyler, to, who run that station for us, for doing about three weeks' worth of work in a couple of days last week to get us all on the air. So we've got all of that and more for you tonight here on Tiger's Roar. Spread the roar. Baton Rouge, Lafayette, New Orleans. I'm Tommy Christ, and we're joined by Ronnie Rance shortly here on the program. And we're going to mix it up and have a lot of fun tonight. Stay with us. You're watching Tigers Roar on Pelican Sports TV. Hello, I'm Rohan David, and you're watching Pelican Sports TV. Hi, I'm attorney Kerry Bryson. My law firm focuses specifically on helping people try to solve their IRS tax problems. Lately, so many new out-of-state companies are popping up claiming that if you send them money, they can resolve your IRS problems. But what happens if they don't? Do you hire an attorney? Maybe you should start with a local attorney that's already handled hundreds of IRS cases right here in Louisiana. When you hire the Bryson Law Firm, you won't be speaking long distance or sending money to some out-of-town high-pressure salesman. You'll meet with us in person at our office right here in Baton Rouge. Your first visit is completely free and confidential, and we'll tell you on the spot exactly how much it'll cost. So if you're hiring a company to resolve your IRS wage levies, bank levies, or tax liens, check their reputation first, then call me, Kerry Bryson, or go to BrysonLawFirm.com. If you're a Louisiana resident and you have an IRS problem, hire a Louisiana attorney, Kerry Bryson. Hello, my name is Debbie. Welcome to Debbie's Bridal, a formal affair. Come see the many great lines we carry in bridal, bridesmaids, mothers, flower girls, tuxes, and more. We also carry over 25 top designer lines in debutante gowns, Mardi Gras, pageant, and prom. Come meet me and my staff with over 30 years of bridal and pageant experience. Debbie's Bridal, a formal affair, Burnside and Gonzalez, where service matters. The family dental practice of Dr. Farrell Fruget Jr. and our highly trained staff are dedicated to providing care and treatment to our patients of all ages in all aspects of dental care. 23 years of experience and advanced training in cosmetic and restorative dentistry, TMJ and treatment of snoring and sleep apnea allows Dr. Fruget to assist you in achieving the best in dental health. Call us today at 292-9700 to schedule your initial evaluation because we know how to make you smile. Joe Johnson is back in town to give you the best deals on used cars. Everybody in the car business knows of Joe Johnson, been in the Baton Rouge market for quite a while. He took a little uh, 
escape from Baton Rouge, but he is back and he's got a place open down in Gonzales on Airline Highway. It's called the North American Automotive Gro Group. It's just north of Snow Seafood down there on the same side of the highway, the old Cars 3 location, if you're familiar with Gonzales and Ascension Parish. Uh, if you want to put it in the GPS, it's 13557 Airline Highway, Gonzales. He's ready to make a deal on a used car for you. They're now open, open for business. Make you a deal tomorrow. I'm sure he'll do it. North American Automotive Group, Joe Johnson, is back in town. Go check him out. Tell him you saw it on Tigers Raw TV on Pelican Sports TV. I'm Tommy Chrysan, again, soon to be joined by Jumbo Ronnie Rance, who's lost so much weight we can't even see him anymore. I'm sure he's, you know, he's the in-house Pelican broadcasting movie critic. Okay, and he's always at movies, so I'm thinking he's uh, coming in here. We'll get a movie review from Jumbo Ronnie Rance uh, uh, as soon as he does arrive. We expect him to be here shortly. Uh, if he gets away from the concession stand at the movie theater, we'll uh, have R Jumbo Ronnie Rance and a lot of good stuff. Obviously, the football game was Monday night. So many people from Baton Rouge and South Louisiana made it over to New Orleans for the game. However, everybody I talked to said it was about 50-50 in the stands of red, purple and gold okay there was a lot of alabama people ended up with tickets to this game just as many as lsu it was thought because of the proximity to baton rouge that those secondary tickets meaning bought from somebody else or bought on ebay or StubHub and ticket exchange all that crap it was thought that more lsu fans would get the tickets but that didn't necessarily happen that way about 50 50 and of course alabama's players gave their fans plenty plenty to cheer about lsu virtually nothing to cheer about. In fact, it was nothing for them to cheer about. Now, Carter Bryan of the Pelican Sports TV crew and Chris LeCock were down in New Orleans, and they were talking to some fans before the game and having some fun. Take a look at that. We've got it for you to share with you now here on Tiger's Roar. your belt here. It's unbelievable. Yes, it is. You can't find it nowhere else but in Louisiana. Why is Louisiana so much better than Alabama? That the Tigers! All about the Tigers! So what makes New Orleans a special place, especially now? Well, New Orleans is home for me, and then, you know, it's just like the whole culture of it, and I just love New Orleans, so. All right, now on to you. What's the craziest thing an LSU fan has done to you? They have actually keyed my car. That is how crazy LSU fans are. They oh, keyed your car. Why would they do such a thing to you? I don't know. I mean, maybe they're just jealous that the Crimson Tide is going to get a national championship. And 14. How, so why, why are they going to get number 14? I mean, why? Because I have a feeling Saban has tricks up his sleeve. Why, why is Alabama the better team? I mean, you know, the last game we really didn't play that well. Uh, nobody even scored a touchdown, really. So I think it's going to be a great game either way. Both teams are awesome, but... I just love another national championship. So Josh Jasper, who was a part of the 2007 national championship team, you're in a different role now as a fan. How does it feel to be here in the Superdome? Uh, it's awesome. I'm kind of missing it right about now. Uh, but I see it from the other side now. This atmosphere is awesome. Uh, couldn't pick a better game between Alabama and LSU, so it's going to be awesome. All right, we're going to use your kick and expertise right now. What makes Drew Alamon and Brad Wing, the special teams unit, so special this year for LSU? Well, they've been behind great guys, and uh, they, they see what it takes to uh, to really perform at this level. And uh, Brad Wing and uh, Drew Almond, they're very calm and cool-blooded, so they know they've already played them once. And uh, luckily for them, you know, it was in Tuscaloosa, and they got to uh, 
perform in, that, in, that, in front of that kind of crowd. And uh, Drew and Brad were like uh, pretty much the, uh, the go-to guys in that game. So uh, after that game, I think they're pretty, pretty ready for this kind of atmosphere too. We're here with some of the best athletes at LSU right now. Cheerleaders. Cheerleaders. All three cheerleaders. All right, and here's a guy that can do flips like no other get, right there. Get, get Let's see, what? Oh! Hold it down, big fella. LSU cheerleading, LSU cheerleading. We're not cheering at the game, but it's all good. Hey, so I want to go to you here. Why is Alabama, why are they not on the level of LSU? Why do you? Why is that? Alabama's not on the level of LSU. Why do, why do you think that is? High power defense, high power offense, they're not going to win this game. All right, we're having an unbelievable time in New Orleans, Louisiana. We just spoke with the LSU cheerleaders, and we're going to have one more flip. And that's Carter Bryant reporting for you live at the Superdome. Let's see how the Tigers go up against the Tide. Keeping in mind that all of that was shot prior to kickoff uh, by our crew, Carter and Chris. Great job in New Orleans. Nick, uh, our editor on that little piece. Uh, so uh, really, really good stuff. When we come back, we'll be joined by the in-house movie critic for Pelican Broadcast and Jumbo Ronnie Rance right after this pause. You're watching Tiger's Roar on Pelican Sports TV, Baton Rouge, Lafayette, and New Orleans. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Heinen, Miss Louisiana Teen USA 2011. And I'm Paige Pennock, Miss Louisiana USA 2011. And, and you're watching Pelican Sports TV. BetterBatonRougeJobs.com has been extremely beneficial for the team automotive group. And what stands out to us, it's easy to use, not only for us, but it's easy for the applicants. And it's the quality of applicants that we get. It's timely. We post something in the morning. By that afternoon, we have double-digit applicants. And again, it's the quality of the applicants. Employers, now is a great time to hire, recruit, and look for potential new employees. BetterBatonRougeJobs.com. It's free for job seekers and great for business. You're on the same flight. We'll be on the same flight. Got it. Thanks, Dave. The big, brilliant, thin Samsung Infuse 4G. Only from the network of possibilities. AT&T. For the thirsty, for those who hang out in packs, for heroes, for sidekicks, for those who see the glass half empty, for those who see it half full, for those on the right, for those on the left, for those with nicknames, for those with curves, for people that cycle, for people that recycle, for BFFs, for frenemies, for those with style, for lovers, for families, for big families, for everyone. 40 years, four decades, nearly half a century. That's how long the citizens of Greater Baton Rouge have chosen Richard's Honda. A simple, sincere, and honest process. Louisiana's oldest and most experienced Honda dealership for over 40 years, Richard's Honda. We continue with Tiger's Roar. I'm Tommy Chrysan of Pelican Sports TV, now joined by... Ronnie Rance of the Jumbo Sports Network, Sports Shorts TV, Sports Shorts Radio. He's everywhere. As I mentioned, he's the in-house movie critic for Pelican Broadcasting's <laughs> operation. The movie has let out. He got past the concession stand, and he is here. Ronnie, how you doing tonight? Doing good, doing good. I recommend uh, there's a lot of good flicks out there at the movie theaters. I'm not going to waste my time telling you which ones to go to because, Tommy, the last movie you went to go see uh, Well, I was... got some I want to see now. I want to see Haywire. Really? I saw the previews for it. I want to see it. I think Rocky One was the last time you went to the movies, isn't it? I like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Uh, yeah, there that you go. Like, 1971 uh, or two, I think. 76, I oh, think. Oh, okay, but, okay. But anyway, how you been, man? I've been good. I've been good. You were in New Orleans Monday night with the big thud in the dome. I yeah. mean, you were in the <laughs> stands and... You know, Les Miles said he didn't see it coming. I, I don't think anybody did. He, probably Nick Saban, if you could get him to tell you straight yeah. up, would say he didn't see that coming. But your reaction, uh, I mean, everybody's got one. What, what is your feeling now that you've had a couple of nights to digest 
which, you know, I, I like to steal uh, Jack, Jack Buck's line. I don't believe what I just saw. That's right. the way I felt after the game. Of course, he meant it when he saw something good. I meant it when I saw I don't believe what I just saw. Your thoughts? Well, you know, all along for the 30-plus days while people were trying to figure out, you know, and be prognosticators on what they thought would happen, I was saying I think it's going to be a slugfest. I think LSU wins, but I think it's going to be super low scoring, and it's going to be more of the same. Like, I just didn't see it really being – different than the first time around because both those defenses are stellar and neither of the offenses are unbelievable and both coaches uh, inherently are conservative so I thought that uh, it was going to be a low scoring game and I thought that that the defenses would dominate it, it, and, and those did come that did come true except for the part that LSU's offense didn't even show up uh, I was surprised that people really thought LSU would win this game easily. Uh, we had Jesse Daigle on Sports Shorts TV and radio the week of the championship game. We had Justin Vincent, the 2003 BCS, or 2004 technically BCS MVP. They both thought LSU would win by double digits. I just didn't see that. I, I just didn't understand why they thought LSU's offense, which had zero first downs and 12 yards against Georgia in the championship game, why, uh, and why that offense would all of a sudden, after 30 days off, resurrect itself and be this awesome offense. So I think people got caught up in the hype and really gave too much credit to the whole month off thing that they were going to X and O this unbelievable scheme. Um, but I was definitely surprised. But, you know, LSU did do some things differently. Uh, Kirby Smart, uh, you know, the assistant coach for, for Alabama, said after the game that early on LSU came out and, and, and – ran things they hadn't seen all year like for example on the option you know they ran the option with two backs uh the first time around well they ran the option with one back in the backfield this time around so they weren't really you know they lsu did some new things and ran out of some sets that they hadn't seen and so they had to scramble to kind of make some adjustments obviously they made adjustments and lsu didn't uh, but it was a terrible performance by the tigers a disappointing performance and it's really a shame after this unbelievable year that they had that I'm worried that the only thing we're going to remember is that championship game and not the record eight wins against top 25 ranked teams. Well, in the SEC championship, the road wins, this, that, and the other. You know, a lot of storylines. I don't know that the dust is going to settle real soon on this. comes out today that Billy Gonzalez leaves the staff, goes to Illinois as offensive coordinator. Uh, it's not surprising to have turnover on the staff, uh, regardless of what season you have at, at this level. Russell Shepard declares for the NFL draft, which I I don't I don't know. Well, I, I heard earlier this afternoon that he was that that was a consideration. <laughs> Did he? No, no. Uh, Brian Lazar reported it on wow. TigerBait.com that he is going to declare for the NFL draft. Uh, his season totals: seven carries for 52 yards. He had 14 catches for 190. He had four touchdown receptions, but. Why not go to a Sam Houston State or something and play right and away? Play and, 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 and then maybe go or go put to some numbers know, on yeah. the board. Anyway, that's bizarre. That's bizarre. But a he, little bit, but he's a guy who's always had a super high opinion of himself. But I think now he's really going crazy. Yeah. Well. So anyway, and then rumors already out there that a couple of guys want to transfer out, not happy or whatever. Will Blackwell's eligibility is done. He's not happy. The whole Jordan Jefferson. Jefferson had to close his Twitter account today because he was getting bombarded with racial and threats and all this stuff. Uh, it, it, it's going to be ugly for a little while. And, and as I pointed out on radio in, in Fort, Fort Walton Beach, Florida today, it's not because LSU lost. It's the manner in which they lost and the lack of effort and intensity and, and you know, just listless and just, you know, no life on the bench. Just all of that is why everybody's mad. If they went out there and just went toe-to-toe -to -toe like a heavyweight, you know, Frazier versus Ali or something and end up losing late or missing a field goal that would have won it late, at least there was an effort. I mean, Ronnie, we, we've been involved in sports all our lives. Every coach has ever told us, just give me your best. Do the very best you can do. And if it doesn't work, you tip your hat and you, you line up and try to get better the next time out. This team didn't show up. They got outcoached, outplayed, outmanned, outexecuted, outadjusted, out everything. That's why people are upset. You know, that old thing, what have you done for me lately? Like you said, they're not going to remember all the victories against ranked teams and, you know, the road win against Oregon and West Virginia and, you know, beating, dominating Auburn and Florida and stuff like that. They're going to remember the way in which this team lost on Monday night in the Superdome. Yeah, and it's really a shame because, uh, you know, I thought, uh, I, you know, I, was, I heard Matt Moscona earlier today on his show make a comment say, well, you know, what would you rather? Would you have gone, rather play like the Sugar Bowl and beating a Michigan and dominate a Michigan or a West Virginia team or a Virginia Tech team? Or would you have play, rather play in a championship game and get beat the way you did? 
And uh, I think most people, obviously, you want to take a chance at the title. But right, absolutely. This, unfortunately, this is, you know, this is going to be a hangover effect, and it's going to linger all the way at least until springtime until they can kind of get a fresh start. And you start seeing Mettenberger, and you start seeing Gunnar Keel, which I think is supposed to come early. Yeah, he's enrolled. And enroll. in school, right. So, you know, you start getting towards 2012. Uh, people will start maybe uh, look, put, looking back at this season with a little more appreciation. But really, really, you know, Alabama, give them credit. They completely dominated LSU in every single phase. Special teams even, which is something that we were surprised. They had the big punt return. Uh, they ran the fake punt, got it by a nose, but they ran the fake punt, a fake field goal, and was able to continue that drive. Uh, Alabama just completely dominated. And, and I said on Sports Shorts TV, that I felt like the fan base of Alabama and the team of Alabama played with a chip on its shoulder and showed up in New Orleans with intensity that LSU and its fans, quite honestly, didn't have. Walking through the quarter all weekend, Tommy, Alabama's fans, I think, honestly, as much as I hate to admit it, won the battle of, uh, of pregame partying. Wow. <laughs> they had more enthusiasm and more numbers in the downtown New Orleans French Quarters and CBD District than New Orleans did. Now, Grant, then LSU did. Obviously, people live there. I get it. But Alabama. Well, and a lot of people went in day and drove the game, in, right. too. Yeah. Alabama came, and they had that, num we're number two in the country. We have something to prove intensity, that chip on their shoulder that LSU just didn't have. Alabama wanted the game more than LSU did on Monday night. And, you know, and no other time matters. It matters what happened in those 60 minutes. A.J. McCarron, you see him here throwing to Richardson. I mean, he. He played the game of his life, and he picked a heck of a dime to do it. You know, and a great play calling, moving him around out of the pocket a little bit, throwing underneath to the tight end early to get him some confidence and make him feel like, hey, I can get on a roll, get in a rhythm, and get going. And, you know, confidence is a dangerous thing. And he got confidence early in this game and, and then had some good catches uh, behind him as well. Uh, game stat comparison, uh, again, the 21 nothing. we got the score back. Was there 21 nothing? Uh, the final score and you know the stats are completely slanted and you know that's five field goals a touchdown a missed extra point a couple of years from now people will think oh three touchdowns three extra points yeah no this game the defense didn't play great they played good this could have been 50 to nothing if the defense would have liked the offense done not showed up and ronnie had an interesting call of pelican sports radio today from a guy who was sitting six rows behind the lsu bench uh, in the plaza level of the dome and he said Every time the defense came off the field, they sat together as a group on the bench, had coaches over there, ex grease boarding it, Xing and O and it, talking, you know, g g coaching them. Said, never saw the offense do that at one time. And again, he was six rows behind the bench. He's a big LSU fan, a big supporter of all programs out there. And he made that comment on Pelican Sports Radio today, and I didn't hear that one before. And, you know, he said, never did the offense get together and grease board it and talk or whatever. He said, once or twice, Jordan Jefferson got on the phone. Who knows who he was calling? But, you know, it, th that kind of alarmed me a little bit, too, that if in the whole game the, the defensive staff was coaching the guys, and maybe that's why they had a good game, and offense just sat around. Yeah, and I, I don't know. I didn't see that. I wasn't watching that closely to what was going on on the sidelines with that. But, um, you know, it's – it, it, there definitely was something wrong with the offense. Uh, there's all kind of rumors. Don't even want to speculate at this point. It's kind of just silly because there's all kind of rumors as to, you know, so maybe a couple of players got in a fight before, you know, the, before the game in the locker room. There's just a lot of a lot of goofy things that are out there. But you can, it, it just was a complete collapse in all phases of the game. Uh, but I give Alabama a lot of credit. Obviously, they're a great team, but I thought McCarron played at a different level. He made some great throws. I mean, uh, he had two or three throws where the players were covered. I mean, even in the, the tight end in the flat, a uh, couple over the honey badger, he had good position. Well, they went after the honey badger. Yeah, I mean, they went up because, Again, I mean. Can we pull that nickname off the well, board for a little while? Well, I mean, the honey badger, let's face it. I mean, you, you, if you're going to pick on somebody, if you're going to, would you want to go Mo Claiborne or you want to go, go honey five badger? Foot nine, you're going to go for the smaller, eight, yeah, the yeah. smaller guy. And, and honey badger is better as a, a nickel back where he's maybe on the line, he's maybe in, as opposed to a cover corner at this phase in his career. And, and his size hurt him a little bit in that he had some good position at times. He was in good coverage at times, but they just made great throws. But I thought McCarron did what good quarterbacks do. And look, you know, he was a big-time recruit out of high school. He's a big-time, you know, quarterback. And he played like it. He, he was able to move around in the pocket a little bit. When he felt pressure, he was able to slide. He made throws where only his guy could catch it. And even that said, Alabama had a couple of drops, so his numbers could have been even better. 
All right, when we come back, we're going to get some comments for you that uh, our crew got after the game uh, from Coach Miles, Coach Chavis, and some of the LSU players, as well as some of the Alabama stuff uh, after the game. We'll have all that for you. Plenty to come still here on Tigers Roar with Ronnie Rance of Sports Shorts TV and Sports Shorts Radio. I'm Tommy Christ and spread the roar. You're watching Tigers Roar on Pelican Sports TV, Baton Rouge, Lafayette, and New Orleans. Key attributes that really puts Papa John's pizza over the top is our meats. Nobody does what Papa John's does. For just $11, get our new double-layered premium pepperoni pizza, loaded with a layer of our signature pepperoni, plus a layer of oversized deli-style pepperoni. Just $11 for a large. Plus, get double points all weekend long and earn free pizza fast with Papa Rewards, only at PapaJohns.com. Sign up now. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. <laughs> Explore the charms of the North Shore and visit St. Tammany Parish. Whether you're looking for a cultural experience or an adventure, you'll find it here. Enjoy great attractions and fantastic dining in a relaxed and friendly atmosphere. Come visit us and discover the history and heritage that is Louisiana's North Shore. For more information, log on to louisiananorthshore.com bb. Hi, I'm attorney Kerry Bryson. My law firm focuses specifically on helping people try to solve their IRS tax problems. Lately, so many new out-of-state companies are popping up claiming that if you send them money, they can resolve your IRS problems. Well, what happens if they don't? Do you hire an attorney? Maybe you should start with a local attorney that's already handled hundreds of IRS cases right here in Louisiana. When you hire the Bryson Law Firm, you won't be speaking long distance or sending money to some out-of-town high-pressure salesman. You'll meet with us in person at our office right here in Baton Rouge. Your first visit is completely free and confidential and we'll tell you on the spot exactly how much it'll cost. So if you're hiring a company to resolve your IRS wage levies, bank levies, or tax liens, check their reputation first, then call me, Kerry Bryson, or go to BrysonLawFirm.com. If you're a Louisiana resident and you have an IRS problem, hire a Louisiana attorney, Kerry Bryson. Tommy Chrysan back here on Tigers Roar. Ronnie Ranch, you got to tell everybody a little bit about Sports Shorts Radio, Sports Shorts TV. I know you had me and old number seven on this yeah. week, which will be replayed Friday night in the Baton Rouge market. Tell everybody first about Sports Shorts Radio. Yeah, Sports Shorts Radio, Saturday mornings, 10 to noon. It's on 104.5 FM ESPN Radio in Baton Rouge. We've been on since February. And, uh, you know, myself, Chad Blue, and we do it live over at Gambino's Restaurant Bakery. And, you know, each, uh, each and every week we have a great show. And then Sports Shorts TV right here on Pelican. Yeah, uh, our home since uh, February as well. Sports Shorts TV, myself, Chad Blue, and Tommy Chrysan filled in this week. And you want to check it out if you missed it. It's going to be on, uh, I think, uh, 8 o'clock on Friday night. And, and Alan Risher, former LSU quarterback, will be in to break down the national championship game and kind of look ahead a little bit to the, to the upcoming season. All right, so that's Sports Shorts Radio, Sports Shorts TV. As always, you can send an email to us, pelicanbroadcasting at gmail.com. That's the email address, and we can answer your questions, make your comments, whatever you want to do. We can get it to the necessary people. You see the uh, email address on the screen, pelicanbroadcasting at gmail.com. As I mentioned to you, we had uh, Chris and Carter from the Pelican Sports TV crew uh, down in, at the game. Uh, the highlights you're seeing of, of the game were shot by Chris from the sidelines. Right now, they put together a little piece for you, some post-game comments uh, uh, on the LSU end. Here they are after the game Monday night. Obviously, it, uh, I told my team we didn't get it going offensively at all. Um, defense was on the field uh, a long time. Uh, give credit to our opponent. Had a great plan. They, they kept the ball. And uh, it became very difficult to get first downs. And that, uh, you know, through it with time, certainly, uh, it spoke to victory for them. I, uh, I told my team that uh, it should hurt. Uh, quality people um, who fight like hell and finish second 
it's 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 not uh, it's, it's supposed to be painful. Um, what's going through my mind right now is uh, I wish we could go back out there and play two or three more quarters, but um, as we all know, there's four quarters, 60 minutes in a game, and uh, at the end of that time, things weren't going our way, and we lost the game. They beat us. It wasn't perfect at all. I mean, we gave up a touchdown, and it could have been somewhere, some ways in there where we could have held those guys from not getting field goals to help our offense also, but not perfect at all. Like I said, it just wasn't in God's plan for us. So. Yeah, you know, I think Alabama did a good job of, you know, not really taking chances down the field. You know, um, you know, it definitely didn't, you know, give our playmakers on defense, you know, a chance at the ball. You know, uh, you know, and when he did put the ball in the air, you know, it was a good ball. You know, it was tight coverage, and you know, he threw a good ball, or it was, or it was a great catch. So, um, you know, credit to those guys for, you know, um, watching film, you know, and being prepared for us. It was a kind of shock to our system that they threw the ball as much as they did, and you know. Uh, I don't think we were prepared for it, and uh, it just shows tonight, you know, we got to be, be prepared for everything. I think if you watch our, our uh, calls that we did throw the football down the field, we didn't necessarily get the football down the field. Um, uh, and I can tell you that uh, the, the pass rush, uh, we did consider it Jarrett Lee, and, uh, but we felt like uh, with the pass rush that we were getting, that uh, we needed a guy that could move his feet and, you know, not sustain, you know, you know that pass rush. We ran a lot of outside zone stuff, a lot of option, and uh, we, we prepared to do that, but we felt like maybe we could run the ball up inside a little more, some isolation and lead plays, but uh, we, 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 stick with, we stuck with our game plan, and unfortunately it, it wasn't the right one tonight. Well, it, to, start the, to start the game out, uh, we had difficult time communicating. There, there was a, uh, a, uh, a number of uh, uh, missteps by our offensive line. A um, number of uh, miscommunications, and uh, and we really did not handle the noise at the start. Now we we practiced uh, against it uh, extremely, you know, really for weeks, and so we felt like we were prepared, but uh, obviously we were not. You know, all through all season, we we, we were pretty much on the field. You know. 30% uh, of the time, and the offense, you know, gave us long drives and scored on them. And, uh, you know, just, just game, I, it was just a shock to our system, just a learning experience. You know, we were on the field, you know, uh, pretty much the whole game. And, uh, you know, yeah, we, we wore down, the, yeah, they wore us down a little bit. And, uh, you know, just they just did an amazing job managing the game, and, you know, doing what they had to do to come out with a victory. They knew that uh, coming into this game, they didn't want to make any decisions that would allow us to make big plays. And, uh, they did a good job of keeping the ball and not making any turnovers. So uh, I guess you can say uh, we didn't execute good enough to, to get the ball on the ground and uh, we'll try better next year. I told my team I did not see it coming. And, uh, and that's my fault. I wish I could have done something to, to, to help them. Um, but uh, for my players that worked their tails off, that they, they, they started you know, in their career uh, to put themselves in position to to win a game like that, I uh, to them I owe I owe a lot. It, uh, we uh, we have to be better. As expected, Ronnie. I mean, lifeless comments, and you know, those guys they aren't dumb. They they know. They put out an embarrassing performance. Uh, the different players we heard from and Coach Miles, and nobody likes losing. Nobody likes losing that way. You and I, we've both been down that road where you got your butt whipped one day and you know you didn't give your best effort. And I think that was evident from some of those comments. Yeah, you know, and you could see, I thought Les Miles, not only in those comments, but I thought more so on ESPN when they showed him outside of the locker room, he looked like a, a punch drunk fighter. You know, he just looked stunned and dazed and I think you know just I think he was in shock at how poorly his team played and how it, the things really just didn't work at all and obviously their game plan wasn't a, did, didn't work and uh, I think he was surprised and he, he was honest at least in a press conference when he said I didn't see this coming because that's what it looked like uh, in the in the time since we've heard comments from players you know that they were you know like you know you saw Brockers say we, we didn't know they were gonna throw it a lot we, we weren't prepared uh, the offense, you know, obviously poor, and, and, and they, you know, you had players that maybe thought some of the, you know, Jared Lee should have played more, uh, gotten some opportunity and didn't, and that's caused some dissension. So uh, just a, a shame that 
13 games, um, and, and really 14 in a row, you go back to the Texas A&M game with less than a year ago, that's 14 games LSU really played well. I mean, really, really played well. Not perfect, but for the most part played at one of the highest levels and, and the highest run that we've ever seen in the history of this program. And it just kind of all got wiped out. It wiped out, but it just it left a bad taste in your well, mouth. A, a lot of the glitter came off. A lot of the a glitter. A lot of the glitter. Was a lot of the glitter. glitter. Here are now some comments from uh, Coach Saban and, and other players and, and some more LSU player comments. Again, this is post game after the 21 to nothing Alabama win. Well, you know, first of all, it, it, it was our plan to do what we did. Um, it's something that, you know, we wanted to do more of in the first game. And I, look, I think it's important that Whoever's calling the plays, whoever's calling the defenses, whoever's making the special teams calls, you got to trust the players. Um, and if you're afraid to do things because you don't trust the players, then you're probably never going to be able to allow them to grow and be all that they can be. I mean, it's just like your children. I mean, there's some things that you just have to let them do. You know, you can't protect them all the time. And that, that, I think that's what A.J. sort of proved to all of us, and I'm not talking about Jim McElwain here, um, that if we were going to be able to have success against a defensive team like LSU, which is a very good defensive team, we were going to have to throw the ball and we are going to have to trust the quarterback to do it. And my statement was, is look at it this way. If we don't do it, we can't win. So what, we need to do it. If a guy plays well, we'll have an excellent chance of moving the ball. And if he doesn't play well, we probably won't have much of a chance to be successful offensively. But if we don't do it, we may not have a chance either. He knew it was coming, and he, he, he managed the game very well. He knew uh, which receivers to throw to. He threw to the open guys, and, you know, the guys that had the best uh, chance of catching the ball and making big plays. And uh, he just managed the game very well. And, uh, you know, that's, that's just I just tilt my hat to the, the offense, you know, the offensive coordinator, just all the film work they put into this game. Because just, just a lot of film work goes into that, and just, you know, they deserve it. They made it all all amazing plays, you know, defensively and offensively. You know, I think AJ did a good job of, you know, managing the game and, you know, um, you know, uh, getting out of the pocket, you know, we was pressuring him. So, you know, he definitely extended a couple of plays and, you know, um, you know, we wish we could have those plays back, but, you know, um, you know, I think we did a good job on defense, you know, uh, but they played a good game today. He did a good job. He did a good job, and you know they uh, they hit us on uh, you know some some sell routes that we didn't play very well, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know uh, when we when we pressured, they did a good job of picking up our pressure. You know we got there a few times, but not not enough. And uh, like I said, you have to you have to give that team credit for the you know the way they executed. They did a good job. Uh, he made smart decisions. Uh, he didn't take any chances that was going to turn the ball over. He did the things he had to do to get points on the board, and uh, as a defense, we just didn't do quite enough to stop that. We were prepared for the run 90% uh, of the time, and uh, they threw the ball. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, when, when you practice for, you know, 30 days for the run, and then, you know, a team comes out and pass, you know, passes on you, you know, it kind of shocks you. But, uh, yeah, I think we did a pretty good job on Trent and uh, Eddie today. Uh, it's just, you know, when they needed those, you know, two or three yards on third down, they got them. And uh, that's when that's when we really, you know, uh, you know, didn't, uh, you know, play up to our potential. We didn't play well enough to win the football game and uh, have played a really good football team. And uh, I think they played as, you know, as well as they possibly could and, and uh, certainly uh, earned a win. And, uh, you know, you look back and there's always things that you could have done better, but uh, I'll just say that, uh, you know, we played a mighty fine football team that played well. This was, uh, this team was a special team, not that the 2009 team was any different. And certainly an honor and privilege to be with a group that sort of, I don't know, made the kind of commitment that you look for from a competitive character standpoint and intangibles that um, 
you always strive to try to get as, as a coach uh, in a group, whether it's togetherness, the positive attitude, the responsibility and accountability they took for each other and themselves, and the hard work and discipline that you know went in the sort of the development of this team. Um, it, it was a really special group, and I feel very privileged to um, have been a part of that. All it is, Ronnie, brings us to what's next for LSU football. As we said, some of the glitter has come off of a remarkable season, arguably the best season in school history. I mean, it went 8-0 in the SEC. They hadn't been undefeated in SEC play since back in 1970 when under McClendon they went 5-0 and in SEC play and won the Southeastern Conference Championship. And the road wins the ranked teams. We all know what happened. But so what's next, obviously, and if you missed this report earlier, Billy Gonzalez has uh, left the coaching staff at LSU. He's accepted an offensive coordinator position at Illinois uh, in the Big Ten. He had been for the past, he had two seasons in as wide receiver coach and passing game coordinator. Billy Gonzalez has left. Uh, in about 15 minutes, we'll talk to Brian Lazar of TigerBait.com. He wrote today on the website that Russell Shepard has announced he will declare for the NFL draft. Remains to see seeing what will happen. But what's next, Ronnie? Is do we have any more defections? Do we have any transfers? You know, we had two guys quit right after the SEC championship game: Jacory Gore and and Edwards uh, Randall, the linebacker from um, Texas, who didn't play much of anything. Gore had a couple of carries this year. We'll have to see. But I guess the next significant thing on the calendar is National Signing Day, Wednesday, February one. A lot of verbal commitments. Don't anticipate any of that changing, but maybe it does. Who knows? But that's what will be next. That's when the next time LSU will be in front of everybody, front and center, along with everybody else on signing day. Well, you know, and I think you're going to see probably this coaching staff really energize the recruiting down the stretch. You know, whenever you have a bad taste in your mouth like the national championship game and what happened, I bet you there's going to be a little extra juice and a little extra fire in their belly over this last month to kind of make sure the recruiting class uh, maybe add a couple more pieces and make sure that it's a solid and gets the job done and that there's no surprises down the stretch. And because then if you if you get to February, you have that big recruiting class, you get all those guys in you want, they can kind of start to heal a little bit from the disappointment of losing in the national championship game. Uh, but from Billy Gonzalez, I, I guarantee you the uh, – the, the Illinois faithful, the uh, fighting Illini fans, maybe scratching their head a little bit going, wait a minute, the passing game coordinator, uh, wide receivers coach at LSU, the same LSU that five first downs in the championship game, one first, uh, zero first downs in the first half against Georgia, he's our offensive coordinator. Huh? <laughs> so uh, uh, I, they might not be real thrilled up there in Illinois right now. Speaking of signing day, a bizarre occurrence oh, my last week. Uh, uh, Landon Collins, who made All-State on both sides of the football for the Dutchtown Griffins. He played for Coach Benny Saya and, and the staff down there at Dutchtown. I've seen this guy play nine or ten times in the last couple of years uh, with some of the high school work of Pelican Sports TV. And uh, a rather bizarre situation uh, on the heels of us talking about signing day. We've got the footage for you. Check this out. Uh, what happened with Landon Collins, the Dutchtown product, and his announcement during an All-Star game down in Florida last week. All right, guys, thank you very much. Here with Landon Collins, the number one safety nationally in the ESPN U150. Who are our two combatants in the national championship game? And are those your two? We know LSU and Alabama. Those are your two, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I can tell you this through the world of social networking, your announcement is so highly anticipated, it's unbelievable. First off, how difficult was the decision? Very difficult. Both teams are just top notch to me, and um, I feel at home at both schools. Now, you are literally from Geismar, Louisiana. Let's see if that plays into things here. LSU. I'm from New Orleans. You're from New Orleans. Okay, we'll give you New Orleans. But that's still LSU country. I know that. LSU or Alabama, the number one safety in the country. Landon Collins will play his ball where? It's a tough decision. Uh, I got both schools here. But I'm going to go with roll, tie, roll. Ooh. Alabama gets the number one Safety in the country, Landon Collins. What was it about Alabama? Um, it's just a bigger decision for me, and I felt home more. And um, 
I just love the coaches and the coaching staff and the players that I'm going to be playing with. Now, might I ask you your reaction? And I'm only doing that because I, I, there was not a lot of joy here. Can I ask why? I feel this LSU is a better place for him to be. LSU Tigers, number one. Go Tigers. You're making some friends. You're making some friends here at the Trop, no question about it. Alabama, it is. What do you think the hometown, uh, the LSU fans are going to think? Um, we know what one thinks. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to say about it. It's just, I guess it's still support me, I guess. There you go. Landon Collins out of New Orleans. Rolling tide to Alabama. Guys, I don't need to tell you, this is a big one. Wow. Well, this is a big one for multiple reasons. <laughs> one, he's a phenomenal player, but two, it looks like he's going against the wishes of his family here. What do I always say in recruiting? Who do you got to identify? The decision maker. So right now, if you're on the coaching staff at LSU, <laughs> you've got somebody to pinpoint. But if you're Landon Collins, obviously you've thought long and hard about this decision and it's not been an easy one. Roddy, I mean, wow, bizarre. I mean, to say the very least, I mean, we've seen that guys used to do the hat thing. You know, you know, the first one I ever saw do the hat thing Who's that? Lester Earl. Oh, wow. He was at Glen Oaks yeah. High School here in Baton Rouge. And he was trying to decide between LSU and Kansas, and he came out to the table with a bag. I, I was standing next to Jordy Holtberg. All the media was over there. We were in the library, the cafeteria at Glen Oaks High School, and he had a bag, a brown paper bag, and then he pulled the Kansas hat out and said he was going to Kansas. But how bizarre is that to have mom sitting right next to you? Obviously, she didn't know what he was going to say. He didn't even tell mom what his decision was going to be. He told some other people he decided two years ago, but just didn't announce it until this particular game. But again, he was, you see him running the football here. He was all state as a running back, all state as a defensive back. He was truly a man with boys. Again, I saw him play nine or 10 times, if not more. And uh, it was here you're going to see him put a hit on somebody. But uh, he's going to go play for the Alabama Crimson Tide and, uh, unless something changes between now and February 1. Yeah, and, and you know, it's and I'm interested really in, in what we really won't know until when it's all said and done, but what does LSU do right now? You know, I mean, there's there's some thought that, well, his mother obviously and, and probably most of his family all wants him to go to LSU, um, and, and will they have any influence in helping him maybe change his mind? Will LSU pressure him? Or will they take a hands-off approach and then maybe try to get in there at the very end, the last week or so? I, I don't know. This is a bizarre situation. And, of course, the soap opera part of it all is the, the story that's come out that, you know, he is dating a young lady that's going to go to University of Alabama and whose mother is the, you know. Some new vehicles in Dutchtown we hear. Who head basketball coach at, at Dutchtown High School and, and uh, supposedly – um, maybe has some personal acts to grind against LSU due to some fact that she uh, wanted to try to get some jobs in the past and did not get them. So, you know, and, and then when you're a 17, 18 year old kid, you, you kind of take that personal approach. I, I'll tell Tommy real quick my, oh, my own personal story, which I think I can relate to Landon Collins a lot when it comes to making poor decisions at 17 and a half years old. When I was a senior in high school, my family moved from Alexandria, Louisiana to Phoenix, Arizona. And I chose to, uh, to, to, to convince my parents over the summer to let me go back to Alexandria, Louisiana to, gra to play my senior year at Menard High School. And, you know, and, and to the public, it was, well, I don't want to go, you know, I don't want to go to three high schools in four years. And we had moved and I want to help, you know, my football team, my baseball team, my basketball team. And they wanted me to come back. I wanted to come back. But reality is, is that if I'm honest about it, it was the fact that I thought I was in love and I had a girlfriend and, and I didn't want to leave her. And she wanted me to come back and I wanted to come back. And it was my first time really going through that experience in life. And you're all emotional and you think that it's going to last forever. And I really chose to go back and leave my family in Phoenix, Arizona to go back to Alexandria, Louisiana, basically because of a 17-year-old girl. He's a 17-year-old young man. And, he, you know, and he, he's not thinking big picture and long term. He's thinking for the here and now, and he's you know, feeling all these emotions and feelings. And let's just hope, let's just hope that the, what he, you're hearing, that maybe he's made this decision a long time. But let's just hope it has nothing to do with a young lady and the mother uh, convincing him 
to go to Alabama. And let's just hope that it really has to do with football and maybe he just chose Alabama over LSU, which, by the way, can't fault a kid. Alabama's a great program. And Landon Collins, if you're watching, let me point out, Ronnie Rance has not had a girlfriend since. So <laughs> let's hope you didn't make the decision for that purpose. Uh, hey, well, I had to do that. You, you opened the door there, nice. you know, and I, Good I came rolling through having fun here Good on, on Tigers Roy. You, we got a whole nother hour of this stuff. Uh, I do want to remind you, Pelican Sports Radio is now on KKAY 1590 AM. Same time slot, 3 to 4 p.m., Monday through Fridays. It does stream on the internet at KKAY1590.com or Global Radio KKAY. Dot com. You can get it there. There's a app, free app on the smartphones called TuneIn. You can search out sports, search out local stations and get it. We appreciate the, the nice response we've gotten uh, just getting on, landing on the air with 1590 AM this week. Ask you to spread the word about that. Tell everybody you know because we, we can never assume everybody knows where we're at. It's also part of a four different sports shows on KKAY 1590 AM. Jordy Hulberg in the mornings from 7 to 9, followed by Chad Blue in 9 to 11, 1 to 3, Buddy Sanji, and then 3 to 4, Pelican Sports uh, Radio. We're the anchor. We're the anchor in the four-man relay team. Wow, that's the last KKAY, huh? Probably the first time since you were about 10 that you were the anchor in a relay team. No, I'm an anchor, all right. <laughs> uh, just uh, not, not the anchor on a relay team. Anyway, we've got a whole other hour of this for you. We're going to take our weekly run through the LSU Athletic Department. We'll talk some more football. Little Jordan Jefferson, Jarrett Lee things, some, some strange things going on. Lots of rumors and stuff flying around. And, and you know, myself, Ronnie, other people in the media trying to confirm this, confirm that. I spoke with several members of the media today, you know, in private conversations and just trying to all put the pieces together. Because for some reason, LSU football and what happened Monday night, two and two is not making four. And uh, members of the media, we're the medium between the fans and the team, we're, we're trying to figure it out. We'll also talk about Bobby Abair. He's all over national radio tomorrow yeah. with this whole story. He was we'll today into, and tomorrow. Yeah, we'll get into some of that. Ronnie Rance of Sports Shores TV and Sports Shores Radio. I'm Tommy Chrysan. Another hour coming your way. And up next, it's Brian Lazar of TigerBait.com. He'll have that latest on Russell Shepard and other things. A whole nother hour. Stay with us on Pelican Sports TV, Baton Rouge, Lafayette, and New Orleans. It's a male class.